So I'm going to start off here with a very basic example and explanation of vertex normals and how they relate to smoothing groups as they're called in 3ds Max or hard and soft edges in, in Maya. So both of these um, simple meshes here they just have chamfers on them and they have hard edges or different smoothing groups in Max across these different faces so wherever there's an angle here there's a break in angle we have a, a different smoothing group there's a break in the smoothing group and uh, the theory behind this is very important uh, particularly for games because um, anything from uh, UV split smoothing groups uh, bacon normal maps and this technique face weighted vertex normals um, they all rely um, on sort of an understanding and a grasp of this stuff um, just basically because of the restrictions of game engines and how things have evolved um, and how assets are built because of those restrictions sort of a, the tradition of how they're built even though um, poly counts or on card vert counts are much higher now these days current gen um, and they'll only keep getting better so um, you know it can add more and more geometry so some of these techniques um, are kind of not becoming obsolete um, they'll be around for a few years yet but the likes of this even uh, this face weight vertex normals um, as it pertains to mid poly modeling it's going to become more and more important let's say because meshes game assets will become denser um, you know as they have been over the last couple of years and this type of workflow where you only have to build one mesh, a medium poly mesh, rather than a higher and low, and bake from the high to the low. Um, you can just use this single mesh. So I'll explain it all as we go. So, as I say, these two meshes here, I have edit normal modifiers applied. So you can have a look at the normals uh, in the viewport here. Oh, wait, they're facing. So as you can see, because of those um, smoothing group uh, breaks, um, the normals on these verts are split and they're perpendicular um, to each adjacent face so you can see it's 90 degrees off this and 90 degrees off this and this is called a uh, non-averaged uh, surface smoothing or vert smoothing um, because they're broken here the shading is going to be um, broken I suppose in the sense that it's it's getting separately shaded here where the vert normal is split and hasn't been averaged so that's why we're getting this faceted look so if I delete those um, modifiers and I'll just grab this one actually and select all the polys and smooth them out can see now that the hard edge here now is gone and it's average now the vertex is average so if I add in this edit normals modifier again you can see that where there were two before that were broken perpendicular to the faces now there's just one coming off each vert and that's because those two that were broken are now average so they're meeting in the middle and that's why the smoothing is carrying across the two faces so that's pretty much the basics um, of vertex normals and surface shade and smoothing groups um, and for more kind of in-depth discussions and about this sort of stuff I definitely um, advise going here anything um, Game related. Some of the stuff is out of date, but the poly count wiki here is, is pretty industry standard, has a place to go for, you know, especially a lot of people learning this stuff because there's a lot to take in. Um, a lot of technical stuff as well with um, creating game assets and to do with game engines and everything. So, um, this page here, Vertex Normal, so it just discusses kind of and then it, it gives links. Um, it's just like a normal wiki, I suppose. So, Vertex Normal. If you come down here now, you can see this. Uh, this is face weighted normals here, and we're gonna go over this now. 
in a while and if you just come down here you'll see the um, editing normals and max and then different scripts to sort of automate this stuff I'm gonna go over that as well and then there's a few others this is the one I'll be using Ver weighted vertex normals script by Martin Bouge Bu Bu I can't pronounce his name but um, um, I think it's Byte uh, something or other, let me see. You probably saw my viewport here, byhazard.com. So, you know, take a bit of time and just maybe read over this stuff as well. And also, um, there's some great links, let me see, not there, and uh, face weight normals, just uh, link in there, and then um, particularly some of these, and especially this one by Obscura and also this one here decal technique from Star Citizen and um, have a read it is but this one here is, is great he goes over everything sort of in detail and other, other people chime in and there's a lot of visual examples as well so definitely um, take a look at that so face weight vertex normals the pros and the cons and um, firstly no normal map bacon is involved um, if you're gonna go the mid poly asset creation route so you only have to create a single model you don't need to create a high poly and a low poly and bake between them your model is going to be your game model so that's um, obviously very important um, a better silhouette so because of the bevels um, you don't have those sharp 90 degree corners and the silhouette is just going to look better uh, quite simple a bevel with something like the chamfer modifier in 3d max and other packages have similar I'm sure um, so that's a great start or even it can do 100% of your chamfering depending on how complex the asset is so there's various scripts as I showed in that link um, and they're pretty easy to implement and the one I'm using is just pretty much just a click um, and then you can edit the normals manually um, but that's a bit of a pain in the arse so if you can get most of the way there with the script um, all's the better so as I say, quick asset turnaround, no high poly. You're just creating that single model, the mid poly model. Um, great for large scale hero assets or environment pieces, hero environment pieces. And one of those links I showed, the Star Citizen techniques, um, used it that extensively on, on the large spaceships because the assets are so large. Um, you know, if you unwrap the asset and then you're just using a 2K texture, that the texel resolution is going to be very low and, and the texture is going to be fairly shite looking really that it's going to be blurry and there won't be enough um, uh, pixels t on your map and mid poly meshes can look better in VR so obviously because the silhouette is better um, it's, it's going to look more realistic I suppose more believable in VR especially because the nature of how um, you're viewing the environment in VR um, can also be used with bacon um, for cleaner gradients so if you're using um, a synced or an average a synced bake something like MCT or something maybe you're going from paint or substance paint or something or any of the major packages except for Max and Maya these days um, are all using MCT now and, and it's synced with UE4 um, so you can you can do average uh, sink bakes but it can result in gradients which can cause um, problems with mipping artifact and so um, this technique here face weight vertex normals in some cases can be also used alongside baking at no extra cost to improve those gradients so that's um, all the good things about it um, I'm sure there's more but um, they're the kind of main ones that I, I was thinking of the main bullet points and the cons, um, the trade-offs, I suppose, um, the extra UV unwrapping because of the bevels, um, it's obviously a bit more work involved um, because you're obviously dealing with um, all those extra kind of rectangular, small rectangular faces. So um, you're, you're going across kind of the angle of the bevel rather than just breaking it, maybe at a seam at the 90 degree corner. So there again, depending on the asset. Um,
but for me, I, I don't mind unwrapping it at all. A lot of people hate it, but I, I actually <laughs> enjoy it. So for me, oh, that doesn't bother me at all. Um, so those bevels, as I say, you know, can create a lot of extra long, thin triangles, which can cause rendering artifacts in the game engine, just due to the way they're, um, they're shaded. Um, you can get away with it in a lot of cases. There, there again, it depends. So LODs can be tricky if not planned in advance. So due to the nature of the amount of bevels on these type of meshes, um, the LODs um, can be difficult-ish to create, but you can plan it in advance so you could uh, you could build your LODs up. So before you you know you'll have your base 90 degree corner mesh with no bevels. That would be your furthest um, or one of the furthest away LODs, and then as you build it up with extra bevels or uh, supporting edges, um, you can save those LODs as you go, or just build them non-destructively. Um, Edit normals in 3D Max. The edit normal modifier is a pain in the air, so um, it's certainly not fun. So they're pretty much the pros and cons, and um, to my mind, anyway, as I say, you can check over those um, those posts and poly count and uh, make your own mind up. So for the next example here, I'm going to actually um, use the script and show you the difference between um, averaging out those normals without using the script and then averaging them and using the script and show you the, um, the difference in uh, quality. So I'll select that one, select all the polys, control A and then I'm just going to um, smooth all those and I've just dragged this tab off um, the ribbon here. Um, I don't really use the ribbon, um, I just use my quad menus and um, customize quad menus but sometimes it's grand to you know, drag some of these tabs off um, you know, if I'm, if I'm working in um, if I'm working in freeform or if I'm re top one um, I'll always just drag this one off here and then you can just close down um, graphite and then just have these floating about so, you know, that's quite handy um yeah so that's smooth and uh, just polygons control a and i'll just smooth that as well and you can see here that you know we're getting that smooth and that averaged effect here across the bevel um, but the surface shading doesn't look great at all you know and um, i can just add an edit normals you can see they are indeed averaged but from this angle here and this angle here across the flat the large flat surface um, you know the shading just isn't grey so what this will do will um, give us I'll select this one here and the script here is just a matter of um, selecting your object with all those faces averaged or smoothed out, same smoothing group, and then just hit generate. And you can see now that uh, the huge difference there. And basically, what it's done, it's taken those um, it's taken these averaged vertex normals, and it's essentially. made them perpendicular again but also average it's almost like um you know the best of both worlds from um the broken up smoothing groups where we had the if you remember with the perpendicular um vertex normals and the averaged vertex normals so it's like a, a mix of the two so it gives us nice shading across here now obviously you can see um it's only a um, like a, an illusion, a shading illusion, the way the render is shading the surface, so it still is just, you know, um, that sharp chamfer geometry. Same as if you bake off a normal map, um, you know, the illusion fall apart, falls apart at certain angles. So, well, it's just a matter of um, unifying or averaging. Um, all the vertex normals or smoothing groups 
and then just selecting the object and then just click generate and then it adds these modifiers in here and gives us that nice result now you can um, add an edit normals modifier or even just this weighted normals modifier that was added you can adjust that um, or you can leave that there and then just um, non-destructively edit on top so as you can see here you can select these and then you can move them and you can see there that's moving back in that direction you can rotate them and you can see the, the effect it's having on the surface normal so even it's a good idea if you're trying to understand all this stuff just go in with simple examples like this and even put an edit normals modifier on and just mess about with the direction of the normals and, and have a look at how they're affecting because of more complex models if you get uh, areas of bad shading you can come in and manually edit these normals um, to alleviate that uh, the shading artifacts and that's pretty much um, all there is to it there's different scripts to use but um, I found this one for my needs to work best so next um, I'm just gonna um, bring one of these models um, with the face weighted vertex normals over into Unreal and just show you um, what it looks like in the engine so here's the asset in Unreal and I've just imported the straight in um, I've exported it, I only check smoothing groups in the FBX export settings from Max and just left everything else, just check smoothing groups and then when you import it into Unreal just make sure to um, set it to import normals and then it will just um, retain those normals uh, from Max, you don't even have to collapse the stack, you can just um, bring it in, export it as is and those normals will be saved in the FBX and here it is with a reflective material on it and you can see like um, you know even even that shading there in the corner picking up some nice reflections and we still have um, you know as I said earlier on a decent silhouette um, where you have the, the bevels so it is a, it's a valuable technique so as I said as well about save this for um, a huge asset or quite a big asset we'll say like um, a bloke was only up to here maybe that was head height and you could climb up these ledges or whatever to get to the top well obviously um, for starters well, you'd probably build build it modular but um, the power of this technique is that you could just build it all as one huge big model and then just use tile and textures across the entire surface <coughs> so it doesn't matter like that um, your textile resolution is tiny because you can just augment that by tiling your textures and then you could use um, decals um, you know to add whatever type of detail you wanted um, whether it was logos um, vents or you know stains dripping stain whatever you wanted to add so it's the power of, of the technique um, or if this was a, were a large spaceship or something, same thing, you know. Um, you could build it in the material um, and then add mesh or deferred decals and a tile and texture for the main body of it. So that's pretty much <coughs> face weighted vertex normals, the basics and, um, you know, what you need to know about them and how to use them. And as I say, make sure to check out that... Um, the polycount wiki and those other threads and links um, that I showed earlier on and I hope this was useful uh, to some people and any questions just uh, give us a shout then. Alright then, cheers, thanks, good luck.